I was a Midwestern girl growing up on a farm in Ohio. I showed steers in 4-H, was voted most talented out of my senior class, and was captain of my cheerleading squad. I was an all-American girl and destined for great things. When I got into the Ohio State dance program, I felt proud. I, get, I made the dance company, I joined a sorority, and after college, I moved to Chicago, where I, I began a career dancing and choreographing. I didn't care I didn't make any money. I loved to dance. Then I met this guy who changed my world. He whisked me away on expensive vacations, bought me designer clothes, took me to fancy restaurants. I was hooked. Didn't take long before I found out how he made his money. Dale was running a marijuana trafficking operation, trafficking Mexican weed from Tucson to Detroit. And it didn't take long before I got involved, before I began driving marijuana. Eight years. As the loads got bigger, the longer we didn't get caught, the more I believed we'd never get caught. But then somebody got arrested, like it always happens. Then I was arrested. I wanted to reverse time, but I couldn't take it back. And I'll never forget the feel of those handcuffs too tight around my wrists. My life shattered. Inside prison was such a different world. It was like Alice in Wonderland, and I dropped down the rabbit hole. Suddenly, everything and everyone I loved was out, and I was in. I was horrified at the large number of women locked up on lengthy, nonviolent drug sentences, mostly mothers, sometimes leaving three, four children behind. I began to become deeply concerned about the millions of children whose mothers were locked up on lengthy, nonviolent drug sentences. What was going to happen to them? And what was going to happen to their children, our future youth? Prison had a smell that crawled into every crevice of my being. I wondered if I was ever going back to a world where phone calls were unlimited, where people used my first name, where I could go wherever I wanted without signing out where I could be touched. The prison was overcrowded, and there were beds in the hall, beds in the TV rooms, beds in the entranceway, beds coming out of my ears, I say. Every day I wanted out of this madness game. Prison wasn't pretty, and I counted my complaints. Eating expired food, pushing pills and over-medicating, dizzy spells from lack of protein, periods that stay plugged up or stay plugged up and didn't flow at all, mysterious rashes, staph infections, hair falling out, faces breaking out, one suicide attempt, one escape, and one woman died in her cube. All of that happened in my first year in prison. Tiny gifts, though, began to surface from the deepest well of my being. To process my pain, I began writing poetry and making tiny pieces of art using the letters I received from my friends and family and a contraband glue stick. See, I believe the more challenging the circumstances, the greater the opportunity we have to discover and receive the most enormous gifts and to discover our truest, authentic selves. Prison takes away, but does it also give? Someone said, women in prison would rather hug each other than shank each other, and it's so true. Inside prison, we did everything together. I had dinner with Maria on Saturday, church with Sonia on Sunday, and every night, Erica came to my range just to say goodnight. But the day I found out Lamont, the gay black woman from Chicago who dressed like a man, was going to be my bunkie, I cried. We could not have been more opposite. But Lamont became my biggest friend and protector. The bonds I have with the women I was incarcerated with will never leave me. I believe the relationships we have beyond race or social class with people we never otherwise would have hold the most amazing power. Still, no one should be locked up. Even one day in prison is one day too long. Our country has the highest incarceration rate in the world. We spend eight to $10 billion every year locking up our youth. Something needs to change. It's up to us. So the point is, we need to lead with our humanity. Why is incarceration the answer? We need to understand what it's really like to be locked up, who we're locking up, for how long, and why. We're locking up our people. We're all in this together. And I'll leave you with prose I wrote when I was incarcerated. Oh, God, I'm fixing to get out of this place as my dialect goes a wondering, and my hand hurts from this manic writing, and my heart's a bleeding for the lonely children as the mother sitting on my bunk is locked up for another 10 years. Dear eyes, big brown little girl, go home to your little boy. Cry with me now. Gently wash away those tears and come home 
soon.